Yes, this is seriously speaking, I'm pretty, pretty excited. Whenever I want to talk about agriculture, I'm excited. Not because I like to eat, but because I know it's a new oil. And we've talked about this a number of times on this show. In this edition that we're talking today, I was challenged by a young woman that says, you know what, when it comes to the sustainable development goals, the media doesn't do enough to support those who are in small businesses. I say, well, you don't understand what it takes to get things on air because whatever we say, there's money behind it. But agriculture is one area that you can't ignore because the opportunities that exist there are so huge. That's why I've brought people who are doing businesses, but they're doing businesses in the added value section of agriculture. Because when you think farming, we have a different perception of what it is. Now, I want to tell you to tighten your seatbelt because what you're going to learn on the show today will make you change your mind about what you're practicing currently. I'll be back on Seriously Speaking, if you don't go away. Yes, welcome back. People say I'm excited about everything anyway. It doesn't matter. Once I'm on the show, because I'm explaining and I'm making you understand certain things, I'm happy. It doesn't matter whether the money is in my pocket. However, on the show today, I have Katia and Kachi. Now, I'm starting with Katia and Kachi, but I have four people on set. This is going to be one of those editions that you're going to have to tune in to see the end of the show. I begin by introducing to you these two people. KK, is that by accident? <laughs> <laughs> well, your name is actually Onye Kachi. Yeah. It's nice to have you on set. Thank Welcome you. to Seriously Speaking. Thank you. Onye Kachi is a farmer, but not a farmer. <laughs> you know, because at least you're taking farm produce to a next level. And then Katya is the one that challenged me. Katya, it's nice to have you on Seriously Speaking. Thank you very much. Tell me about your work, because your work is primarily, and you're, you are very passionate about women, you're passionate about agriculture, and you're passionate about sustainable development goals. How did you get there? Well, it's been a interesting journey over the past, I would say, 12, 13 years. Um, I've always wanted to work in the development sector. Um, from a very young age, I got interested in political science. Um, and coming from a family of journalists and media enthusiasts... My mother I, used to work in NTA, by the way. Yes, I always, <laughs> always had this interest for questioning things. So one of the big things for me as a young adult was how do we change Africa? How do we improve development? And in my work, I've been fortunate to work in different sectors, like you mentioned, education, um, agriculture, and women's issues. And I'm particularly, uh, I would say, um, passionate about agriculture um, just because of the impact that it has on Nigeria and in terms of what our potential is. Um, so I'm really excited to be working in this space as a consultant mm -hmm. to organizations that are involved in the sector, um, which gives me a very unique perspective from the outside, um, what the system looks like and what the gaps and challenges are. What, what, what caught my eye at the Nactus activity that we went through and you were talking about you know, sustainable development goals, was, or my ear rather, was what you talked about meeting farmers who had produce that was rotten, yeah. you know, and that's how Kachi came on board. I thought about Kachi, you know, because Kachi is taking produce from the farm to real produce. But you're originally a computer scientist. Or oh, what is it, computer engineer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that's what I studied in university. But, um, what university was this? In the US, Bowie State University. Um, but I, I worked, I actually didn't practice computer science as a professional. Um, I, I had an internship when I was in uh, university. I worked in Chicago. And I realized, you know, this is really nice, but uh, I, I want to do something else, you know. So after I graduated, I, I had the opportunity to work in oil and gas space. And I... Were you looking for the box? No, <laughs> <laughs> no I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I basically uh, jumped at the opportunity and it was more of a hands-on thing. And I worked on, I worked on the rigs, you know, and um, offshore and onshore in, in the U.S. And it gave me a different perspective on just being able to push myself because I worked crazy, crazy hours and, uh, you know, in some very, very dangerous situations. I see, read, the money was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, yeah it, it was good, you know, it was good. But, um, you know, I just took on the, 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 uh, the challenge of going outside of the comfort zone because a lot of my friends worked in offices, you know, but I worked on a, on a drill rig, you know, which is a different experience altogether. But after that, um, I worked for eight years, you know, in the oil and gas space in the U.S. and Hall with Halliburton and Kongsberg. What and brought you home? So uh, my dad had an oil and gas business in Nigeria, and he, he asked me eventually, like, look, it's probably time for you to come back to Nigeria and join the company. And um, 
I said, okay, fine. And all of my friends had moved back from the U.S. anyway, back to Nigeria. So, and, and I always wanted to move back. I knew it was only a matter of time. How does one get there? This wanted to, because I, I mean, I hear kids, America is comfortable. So why do you want to come back to Nigeria? That's difficult. Because that's not where you're from. Uh, <laughs> that's not where you're from. I, grew, I went to primary school here. I went to secondary school here. Well, some, of, some, um, some part of secondary school here. I have a lot of friends here. My family members, are, siblings are here. And they all were in the States and they moved back. So a lot of my support system is in Nigeria. So it was only right for me to move back home and then be able to do something that um, for my country, you know, and in the U.S., everything that can be done is pretty much done, so Another to speak. Percent. Uh, but I, I feel like there's more of there are real challenges here in Nigeria, and um, I felt like it'd give me a it'd give me a good opportunity to succeed if I came back. So to today, me. you package tomato soup. <laughs> so in 2015, with the downturn in the oil and gas industry, I decided that it would be time for me to do something else and um, diversify, you know, into the agri space. And I think that um, certain things happen, but I think that what gave me the passion to even think about something like that was because in computer science, um, when we were uh, in the US, we saw products that came out like Facebook. You know, when I was in school, Facebook came out, all these products came out. And what you find is that they reach a wide range of people. It's not just you're dealing with a company. Like in oil and gas space, you're dealing with a company. You're not dealing with customers. Mm -hmm. So it always, I always was fascinated about being able to have a product that reached a wide range of people. So when the opportunity came, I looked at, OK, this is tomatoes we know is wasting. You know, we have post-harvest losses, serious post-harvest losses in Nigeria. And I looked at the opportunity that you know, we, we, have, we import so much of tomato paste and everything into this country. And I said, okay, why don't I take this opportunity to create a product? And then we started thinking. I started thinking and spoke to a few friends. And then I developed the idea of ready stews, which is basically a fully cooked tomatoes, onions, peppers, spices, oil, everything cooked. In, is it in because you're a bachelor? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm wondering, I, mean, I must go back to Katia now. Yeah. I mean, because Katia, you still see a lot of wastage on the, you know, on the fields. So when you think agriculture, what comes to your head? What's the next step for agriculture? I think there are a lot of opportunities in the agricultural space. Um, I think as young people, we have a tendency to think of agriculture as just farming. But like Kachi has said, there's so many other opportunities, especially related to wastage. Um, if that's an issue that young people can start to tackle, then you see more people playing across the value chain, um, for example, in processing and packaging. Um, which are two very good and profitable value-add areas. Um, it doesn't come without its challenges, of course. Like he said, you need capital. Um, but there are facilities um, that are existing, either government, um, from the government, or with different development banks that have really tapped into this market to say, you know what, there are needs here, there are financial needs. How do we help business start up in this space? So I think with regards to waste, one of the areas that young people can play a role is to start organizations or partner with other people what who could are attract them, in this though? space. Because, I mean, just thinking about it, some people may not see that this exists. What made you know that this is something I could do? Because I think 90% of our economy is tied to oil. Um, so, and I've had the experience of the sector. And I know that the, the value in the sector was eroded for, you know, the crude prices that went down significantly. So for me, having the experience of having the sector experience, I knew that we needed to diversify away from this economy. Most people, most young people don't look at agri agriculture as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a sector that they would like to go into because it's not as... It's not, it's not as glamorous. It's not that's, glamorous. That's why I brought you guys. You yeah. Know, looking very... But you know, but because it, primarily it's banking. You know, it's uh, it's it's oil and gas, and you know, I think IT is starting to come in now, but not really. But primarily banking and oil is really where the young people look to work in Nigeria. Um, businesses like you know our business is it's a new thing. I think we also try to inspire young people to go into it because if you look at the product. It's, it's, it's well packaged. You don't think it's even made in, a lot of people don't think it was produced in Nigeria, but it is. You know, I work with farmers, you know, and I'm able to add value, as Katia said, to the product and giving them a finished product that they can, that's convenient for them. You know, and they don't have to stress their, their circles. Everybody's working So now. your business will not survive if there are no tomato farmers? Pretty much. So we need to, we need to work, you know, backwards, right? We need to mop up a lot of the wastage that is, you know, going on in the fields. And then also encourage farmers to continue to grow. 
Um, Nigeria is the 13th largest uh, producer of tomatoes in the world. But 50% of it doesn't get to the market because of the post-harvest losses. Why did you pick tomato, though? Did you, like, say, I want to go into farming, and then I'm going to do, I mean, farm added value in farming, and I'm going to go into tomato? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a commodity that, I, that 99, everybody eats tomatoes in Nigeria. 99% of Nigerians love to eat stew or love to use something <laughs> with tomatoes. It's a product, jollof rice is made from tomatoes. Everything we do primarily, some people eat stew morning, afternoon, night. So it's a, it's a commodity, it's, it's tomato is something that Nigerians love. You know, if you look at the numbers of what we import into this country and concentrate, tomato concentrate, it's, it's, it's outrageous. So um, it's, a, it's an area that is new that needed local production, albeit very, very challenging. But I, I, I think that with the current um, devaluation of the currency, it allowed for local players to sort of go into the space and be able to succeed because imports now are becoming more expensive. You know, you know what he said about younger ones wanting to go into a certain part, a particular kind yeah. of field? You, you think that problem will change soon? I think so. I think we're moving into an age where entrepreneurship is, is becoming sort of mainstream. Mm -hmm. And how does that happen? I think it's by us understanding that we can actually solve our problems. Um, there are a lot of different moves, movements and um, I would say even funding coming into this space where young people are given platforms to tackle issues, to solve problems, to come up with ideas. And I think the more that we encourage that, the more we'll see young people begin to take um, a step in the right direction in terms of trying to solve problems. I think that's, for me, is the fundamental thing. I, I think I pick on that entrepreneurial, I think it's entrepreneurial spirit that is driving the younger ones today. So we want to move them into agriculture exactly. because it's a space that touches more lives. Exactly. I'll take a break and I'll bring my other two guests before we begin to engage on the other side. Thank you, Katya. Thank you, Kachi. We'll be right back. Thank you.